What's going on, everyone? It's your girl, Rebecca Ruber here. And today on the show, we have a 25-year-old American boxer from Brooklyn, New York. This fighter is back in the ring this weekend for the WBA title eliminator against Hector Luis Garcia in Las Vegas for Showtime. With a record of 16 wins, zero losses, six by way of knockout, we have Chris Primetime Colbert. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so excited to get to talk to you a little more. Um, I wanted to start with you from the very beginnings. When did you pick up your first pair of gloves and why? Uh, when I was 14 and because I used to, I like to fight. Uh, I love, I love to fight. I was fight my whole life. A lot, I know a lot of boxers might say that, but I really lived that, that life. And the streets will tell you and the police will tell you that I used to really live that street life of fighting. I wasn't really a weapon, a big with weapons, but with these hands, these shits worked since I, I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, did you compete in like golden gloves, diamond gloves? Yeah, yeah. I, I, to be honest, I won all, every tournament if, as an amateur. I won the silver gloves, uh, junior Olympic nationals, ring shot world championships, golden gloves, metros, New York championships, Long Island championships. Um, USA championships, Olympic qualifiers. Uh, so the the list is long. And now it was only pro. I was only amateur for like five years. Wow, only five six years. Wow. Yeah, five, six years. But I won everything. Was there a specific moment in your amateur career where you realized that being a professional boxer was what you were meant to do? I knew I was going to be a professional boxer when I put them gloves on. I, I, I watched Floyd Mayweather on TV making so much money off of fighting. And I was getting in trouble from fighting and wasn't making no money. And I and I told myself one day I seen a, I seen Sugar Shane Mosley versus Floyd press conference. I said, damn, he making all that much money for fighting, and I ain't getting. Only thing I'm doing is getting in trouble. I said I'm gonna be like him. And look at me now, I'm shining like a star. Well, I wanted to ask you to elaborate on a quote that I saw in an article I read about you, where you said that you're not really focused on the belts, but more of the money and the legacy. Yeah. Can you down on that. You got to think about it. If we was fighting for free. None of these fighters would be fighting. Mm -hmm. So all this shit that they talking about, oh, he not fighting for the money, he's for the belt, he's bugging. No fight is gonna fight for free. I didn't get it in this game to, to do to fight for free. I got it in this game to change my life, not for free. That's <laughs> you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Like the belts, the belt is a bonus. You gotta think about it. Without the fighters, it's no belts. What be what belt is gonna be? The fighter to make the belt. Yeah, for sure. The legacy come from the fighter, from the uh, with the belts. So, if like I said, if this game was for free, nobody's not doing it. I know I'm not doing it. I, I took the, I wanted to take the cheat route, but the cheat route is a harder route than a regular route because it's not easy to become a superstar in this game. It's not easy to become a prime time. Not easy to become a Floyd Mayweather. It's only one of us. These is like, so like let's say, if, like let's say if my son. If my son, bah, my son might not be as good, good as me. Mm -hmm. He might have the same name or try to use my name, but it's, it's only it's, it's, it's only one me. Yeah. So I feel like uh, when they talk about these belts, these belts are just a bonus. Like I said, uh, these is Gucci belts to me. Mm -hmm. I collect the Gucci belts. When I get the unification, undisputed title, then we're talking about a Birkin bag. I'll take that. Okay. Okay. So what is, what does a legacy mean to you? Like what, what is your definition of a legacy at 25 years super, old? Super fights, super fights. You see me, I, I got the best record at 16 and 0 record hands down in the game. Name one person that got a better record than me. And I'm going to sit here and wait. Well, speaking of big super fights. So hold on. Can you name, can you name one fighter that got a better resume than me in 16 fights? But that's not an Olympian. In, I was going to say, well, in your weight class, no, any weight class in a boxing game. That's not an Olympian. That's 16 and 0. That's not, well, that's not an Olympian. Yes. Not off the top of my head, no, honestly. Exactly. No. I'm going on my six undefeated fighter. All of them is prospects, supposed to be something. I crush their dreams, fuck their career up, and I'm 16 and 0. I'm supposed to be being a world champion tomorrow night, but God got other plans for me, and I'm, I'm just going to take those plans and roll with it. Well, I wanted to touch on that a little bit, but to go back to your question of, um, are and have any fighters fought any one recognizable at the same uh, at the same record as you? Uh, your opponent that you're facing currently, 
is someone that has had 10 knockouts um, at, in their career. Um, mm -hmm. It looked like by, from what I was seeing based on their resume, based on other people that you fought, this might be your biggest test so far. Do you see it as a uh, test? Hell no, hell no. Why not? Uh, I feel like my biggest test is, uh, was um, King Tug. He had and I saw you resume. talk about that, why? Uh, he had the better resume, Olympic, Olympic uh, silver medalist. Mm -hmm more experience i don't count this guy as being a to the tomorrow night as being a threat the way they, they they say he is i'm not disrespecting his skills no disrespect to him but he just gonna have to prove me wrong tomorrow well but, i know uh, i know you mentioned he's uh you said who uh he's just a step in your way to yeah everybody is up. everybody's just stepping my way that i need to get past them at the end of the day but uh i don't feel he got he, he gonna bring nothing to, to the table that I never seen. Y'all see me fight power punchers. Y'all mm -hmm. see me fight people that slick. You see me like I I've been there. I've been there. I'm a veteran with 16 fights. How do you feel your style will be able to combat against Garcia tomorrow night? I think it's gonna fit Lovey like a piece a missing piece to the puzzle. To be honest, because once I get that jab flopping and and I start touching him, oh my bad, sorry. Once I start getting my back. Once I start getting that jab flopping, it's over. I start touching him. Once I start touching him up tomorrow, it's over. He's no stopping. Well, one thing that I've learned about just being involved in the boxing community is that nothing is ever guaranteed in the sport. And nothing. That's they, why I don't, that's why I don't underestimate no opponent that I go in there with. He's 14 and no 10 knockouts. He got some type of power, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna disrespect his power and his skills, but like I said, he's just going to have to show me them all because I'm definitely going to show him what I got. He, he, he don't think I got power. He currently said I'm not particularly dangerous. Okay, well, we're going to see them all, how dangerous I really am. Hmm. Well, your fight, like you said previously, was supposed to be a world title fight. Uh, you against Roger Gutierrez. And unfortunately, Gutierrez came down with COVID and yeah. that fight's been put on hold. Um, yeah. I like to take stories like that and turn them into positive lessons for the viewers. So yeah, that's a fact. You have Can you to, give us a lesson of what you learned so far from this experience? I, I, I just feel like everything happened for a reason. God got a plan for you. Sometimes God might put things in front of you that you're just going to have to overcome. And this is one of them things. And uh, I, I, I genuinely, honestly uh, hope that if Robert Gutierrez really have, do, do have COVID him and his team, I hope they heal up uh, a thousand percent um, and he come back even stronger. He, and then we can get this popping on when he when he come back. There's no rush. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I ain't, I ain't going nowhere. But um. I'm just thankful to still be getting a fight because nine times out of the 10, when stuff like this happens, the fight get postponed, you don't get no fight. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful to have a replacement. Shout out to uh, Hector Garcia and his team for taking this um, big competition, uh, step up in competition against a killer like myself. Uh, but uh, tomorrow, I'm going to show him why you don't do things like that against guys like me. So before I recorded, you said that you came in two pounds under, correct? Yeah, my, I, it was more so making a statement because my last fight, I was distracted on other things, like, because I got businesses. So I was distracted on the businesses mm -hmm. and doing other things besides focusing on making weight and training properly. I trained good, but I wasn't focusing really on making weight. I was cheating. You know, having a restaurant is hard, especially when you got chicken in there. My chicken slapped. So it's hard. Like, it was hard. Like, I was doing too much at the same time. And this fight, I had to make a statement and show the world that I, I don't play around with this boxing shit. I take this shit serious. And um, I'm going to come in on weight, it maybe under. And I came in two pounds under. So um, I haven't gotten a chance to watch your weigh-in just yet. What did you weigh in at? And were there any words exchanged or anything that was going through your mind during your final face-off with your opponent? Uh, no, nah, tomorrow, uh, basically, I weighed at 128.2. And uh, it was more so he just said, uh, mañana. And I said, see, sí, mañana, I wear my thigh. I told him I'm going to kill him in Spanish mm -hmm. tomorrow. And I told him, be ready, because I'm ready. When you're facing off with an opponent, are you able to kind of read their body language? And no, nah, uh, I don't believe in any of that. No? Sometimes I play around, I go up there, I act like I'm shaking and shit. Like, they think I'm scared, they think I'm scared. Oh, well, well, bring the heat. But I don't believe in all that body language. Tomorrow, we're going to see. When them yeah. hands start going, we're going to see what it's really about. Was there something that you focused on this fight camp that you haven't done previously that you believe is going to help you attain the win tomorrow night? No, uh, to be honest, I just added a nutritionist to my team. Uh, she did a tremendous job helping me make the weight. 
128, as uh, you see, I came in. Uh, shout out to her, her name is Rhea. She did a tremendous job. Um, and me and my, my team is just on our P's and our staying sharp, staying focused. And uh, we did, we got the job done. Now, tomorrow, we're going to seal the deal and wrap it up with a bow. All right. Well, I guess you're going to have to show uh, your nickname, Primetime, tomorrow. I don't, I, don't, don't I always? <laughs> well, I wanted to ask you about your nickname. How did you get that nickname? And when did you get that nickname? Let me get my phone on Do Not Disturb. They keep calling me. People keep calling me. It's a big night for you tomorrow. I understand why. Um, uh, the name Primetime basically came from my favorite athlete of all time, Deion Sanders. And um, uh, I just knew it fit me when I changed when I picked the name because when you got a name like Primetime, you got to be some type of outstanding person. Like Deion Sanders is an outstanding person. Like when you speak about me, you only speak about great things. Mm -hmm. People go on hate and say what they got to say, but it's okay that comes with the territory at the end of the day. So I just feel like what I do is great. 16 and 0. I'm number six undefeated fighters. How many? I don't even know how many current um, past world champions I beat. Uh, but uh, I ain't taking the easy route. Like I said, after I win this fight, God willing, everything go as planned. Uh, I fight Robert Gutierrez next. And then after that, I go in the ring against Gary Russell and test my skills and, 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 and put Gary Russell in retirement. Now why, now, why Gary Russell? What's what's the significance of Gary Russell? What are you talking yeah, about? He said he wanted he want to fight at 130. Mm. But he's not coming up unless he's fighting a champion. I told him I'm gonna get the belt. I told him today I'm gonna get the belt. He said, "Hold it, don't fight me too quick." I said, "Nah, I, I'm I'm ready to test myself against the best." Gary Russell is one of the best fighters in the world. Nobody can doubt it. his skills, hand speed, boxing IQ. He's one of the best fighters in the world. Well, but uh, I'm I'm down to test my skills. But but despite the loss that he just had, he should have never went in there in the first place because the guy, even the guy, struggled to beat him when he had one hand. Yeah. If he had two hands, we knew it would have happened. So. Uh, despite that, he's one of the best fighters. Um, but I want to test myself against the best. I want to show everybody that I, I, I really do this shit for real. This, when you mention prom time, don't, don't think twice about fighting him because he's that guy. Well, I see you're pretty good friends with Shakur Stevenson, Keyshawn Davis. I'm not like friends with Shakur Stevenson. I'm not friends with Keyshawn Davis. I'm not friends with none of them. I don't, don't, I don't no. got friends. In, I don't have friends in this boxing game. Let me Why tell not? you that. That's one thing I don't deal with is boxers. Danny Garcia is my friend only. Erickson Lubin and Tony Harrison. The rest of them, I don't mess with these boxes. I do not mess with them. I, that's why I stay in my lane and I do what I do. I'm not, not like them. I had a video with conference with them like not too long ago. Like how did that come to that? Nah, that was just like on some like, that's what I'm saying. Like we was good and then I, I check on things, interviews about me and people start like, I don't understand. Like I gave a compliment. I said, I thought Shakur Stevenson is good enough to stop Jamel Heron early. That's a compliment. I said, because me, I would have stopped him early. He took that as me coming, throwing shots at him. And start going on social media interviews and talking. Like, that's whole shit. If you got something to say, just call me and tell me. If yeah. you want to settle it, and then he tried to get gangster, I had to tell him, like, bro, you're not like that. Please stop, because I'm like this for real. Like, mm -hmm. like anytime you see me, if you want to fight, like, streets, we can do this. Like, I don't got no problem with that. I'm, I do this. So do you see that being that a fight in the future as you guys... Yeah, that's a super fight. Me and Shakur Stevenson, I definitely want that fight. I, I want to put that little boy in his place. But uh, that all comes with the right time and the right money and the right place. It got to be right. Everything got to be right. Because I'm ain't. i I'm no hater. Just because I don't like him, I ain't going to discredit his skills. That boy's talented. Yeah. Super talented. I love the way he fight. I, I can sit down and watch him. Talented. But as a person, he's just a hoe. So I, I distance myself from these boxes and I stay in my lane and just work by myself. I'm not one of them boxes that want to hang around famous people or want to hang around boxes. No, I want to hang around myself and my team and my people that I know. Now, do you feel like you've grown to kind of get to have that attitude towards fighters or have you always been? Yeah, because like yeah, before I used to think that these fighters were so cool. I wanted to be their friends. And then I had to learn like, like, nah, these, not, these niggas ain't for me. Okay. These niggas is not why I want to hang around. Like they all trying to be something that they really not. Not every fighter, because I don't know every fighter, but the fighters that I know that we hang, I don't hang around. Like, I'm not with them. Look, so, you the way that you present yourself and the way is this is this who you are hundred percent, or is this is this a certain persona that you're trying to push? You ever seen me before? You ever met me before? I've met you in person, no. Your husband met me before? 
I'm, uh, I don't, no, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. If you know anybody that know me, you ask them how, how I am. This is me. I say what I mean and I mean what I say. I speak my mind. I don't hold my tongue for nobody because I don't care. I'm not worried about nothing. I ain't worried about nobody. Like in the words of French Montana, I ain't worried about nothing. <laughs> like <laughs> I ain't worried about nothing. I don't care how people feel, nothing. You want to speak my mind. Is that you gonna respect it or you gonna check it? I respect and I ain't and nobody didn't check me that. Well, on that note, I want to bring it down to a more lighter way to conclude this uh, episode. Actually, before we do the segment, I wanted you to plug your uh, your primetime chicken in Garfield, New Jersey. Shout out Bergen County, North Jersey. Um, tell me about that, how you got started with that business. Um, and yeah, kind of like what like what's different about your chicken place compared to the other places uh, locally in North to Jersey? To be honest, to be honest, uh, I didn't try everything in New York, North Jersey, but uh, uh, to be honest, the chicken spot just came on like uh, scared money don't make no money. I don't want to be like fighters, like these other fighters, like I keep saying. These fighters take their money, go buy. I got a lot of jewelry, yes, got a lot of jewelry, but I'm sponsored by a jewelry store. So don't get it twisted like if I'm out here spending my money on jewelry, no. I'm a smart guy. I got a lot, I, I got. I'm working on my fourth business. I'm working on my, I'm working, I got two Airbnbs in play that I'm about to get in Miami. I got one already. So I'm, I think I'm doing kind of good for 25 years old with 15 fights. I got to invest in my money. I'm not trying to be like these fighters and want to compete with other people, other artists. I'm not no rapper. So I know I ain't no rapper. I, do this. I don't buy jewelry and buy the clothes that everybody got. I buy what I want and what I like. Mm -hmm. I treat myself because I, I, I work hard. So uh, I decided to invest my money because I don't want to do this boxing shit forever. I ain't going to lie to you. I don't like boxing. I love boxing, but I don't like it. Like losing weight. Who want to be losing weight and dieting? That's the worst. I want to be able to eat what I want. I'm fat. I'm, I'm greedy. I like to eat. You want to be able to eat your chicken at your restaurant. Yeah, like, you know, I'm in camp. I'm in, in, in the restaurant stealing one bite of chicken, eating one bite and giving it to my my, my niece or something. Like, I be star. I want to eat. I don't want to do this forever. So I decided to invest my money because scared money don't make no money. In life, you're going to learn. You're going to live to learn. You're going to learn to live. And you might take a loss. I might. God, you don't, I don't know. I might take a loss with the chicken squat. Never know. But I learned going for it. That's my first ever business that I invested in by myself. And I actually wanted to ask you because it seems like you're someone that really believes in yourself, which is great, as you should. Um, yeah. You chose to open up a chicken spot during COVID when there were shortages on food and chicken. It was shortage. I, I know it was short. You see, I just took a risk. I didn't know that. Like, I'll be sending my workers to get restaurant depot to re-up on chicken. Mm -hmm. They see no chicken for like three days. I had to close my restaurant like twice. Like, yo, we ain't got no chicken. I remember that because I remember you posting like the opening and then not so long after, like, we ran out yeah, of chicken. No and I was chicken. Like, wow. like, this is crazy. I didn't know you could be as short as in chicken. How much chicken is out there? To get, like, crazy, crazy. <laughs> but like I said, life is a lesson and lesson and you're going to live to learn. And I'm learning. I'm learning. How do you, how did you create the menu for your, for your restaurant? Like, is it a secret family recipe or like? No, I, I paid a chef and me and the chef did it together. We came up with a, 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 a recipes for the chicken. The sauce guaranteed, if I give you a thousand dollars, you go to another restaurant and find the same sauce that I got in my restaurant. And I only got two sauces right now. But if you go into a restaurant and find the same sauce, I'll give you a thousand dollars. That tastes exactly the same. You're not finding it. And I guarantee you that. Might, and if you could come to my if you could come into my shop and say my chicken is not good, I give you a thousand. I'm confident. You guys heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, I'm confident. I'm confident. But you got to be completely honest. No lying. I have no reason to lie. I have nothing to lose. Okay. See, I I I'm I'm confident in my chicken. I like that. So on that note, um, I'm going to now start with the segment that I was telling you about earlier. Um, uh, the speed round game called Unboxing the Boxer. Pretty much, I'm going to ask you a bunch of random questions that you've probably never been asked on an interview. You answer them, and if there's an explanation you have for why you answered the way you did, you're more than welcome to uh, explain, okay? Let's go. All right. If you were a pro fighter, what could you picture yourself doing? I wanted to be a f pro football player. That's my number one sport, football. I love football to the death, like, but things didn't go as planned because I dropped out because of uh, boxing, mm -hmm. but... uh. 
I wanted to be that. If, and if I didn't, that didn't work, I probably would have been the best drug dealer in Brooklyn right now. Okay. To be okay. honest, I ain't going to lie. No, that, I, I like it. Uh, favorite sports team? Kansas City Chiefs, Brooklyn Nets. Okay. Of course, Brooklyn Nets makes sense. Uh, favorite food? Primetime chicken. I like that plug. Favorite movie? Uh, I got a lot. I can't give you really one. I like a lot of movies. You're relaxing in bed. You just want something that you just know you're going to enjoy before you go to sleep. Pick one movie. I can't. Like, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, I got a selective few of movies. I don't watch much movies, but I got like 10 movies on my game that I actually sit down and watch. I replay them different times. Like, Hairspray, Let It Shine, uh, Shotters, uh, for all the Fridays, um, Baby Boy. Uh, equalizer, equalizer one, equalizer two, uh, blind side, uh, those like those movies. I got probably like three more, but I can't think of it. You have like, like a wide yeah. range of genres that you like, it's not like a specific yeah, one. yeah, no, no genres, no specific genre. Um, favorite musical artist uh, right now, or overall, you can pick either. Right now, Rob Wave is my favorite artist right now. Uh, music wise, um, that's rap, R&B wise, I can't even tell you. I love R&B music like crazy. Unless all oh, I listen to it. They always think I'm in love. Like in my locker room tomorrow, I'm be playing love songs because I'm, I'm about to go in there and make love to this kid's face. <laughs> I love it. Favorite boxer besides yourself? Sugar Ray Leonard. Is there is that someone that you looked up to when you were younger and watched his fight? No, nah, I never used to watch boxing. I never used to watch boxing. I just started watching him when I started boxing. But I just like his skills, his style. I think his style match lines like him. I got more than one, but like he's number one, like one of the number ones. Okay. Biggest fear. The death. death. Even though we we're gonna die all, but my biggest fear is to. No, my biggest fear, matter of fact, is to disappoint my kids. Mm. To make them live the life that I used to live. That's my biggest fear, actually. Okay. Favorite holiday? I don't really, I'm not a holiday person, so I don't really got one. But I've so far been liking Christmas, but I don't really, I only like Christmas because I got a son. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like the Christmas holidays are only important when you have little ones and they yeah. enjoy it. Um. Thing that annoys you the most? Uh, lying ass people. That That's something that would annoy me too. Uh, favorite animal? I don't like animals at all. At all? No. No type of animals? None. All right. Favorite store to shop in? Uh, Gucci. Gucci. Oh, it's Gucci belts, collecting them, okay. Uh, first job, if you ever had a first job before becoming pro? Uh, I was a mechanic. You what? I was a mechanic. A mechanic? Really? Okay, so you can still fix a car in now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, favorite song at the moment? I don't have a favorite song, but damn. I had a lot. I can't even. R K. Uh, Favorite song I like to listen to in the lap room is R. Kelly, World's Greatest. I have to listen to it at least 15 to 20 times before I leave out my lap room. Is it just calm you down or like, what does it make you feel? Why do you like that? It, give me in my, it just gives me in my zone like, oh my God, I'm that star up in the sky. <laughs> oh my God. If I'm being in bumping that out like crazy. Um, If you have a middle name, what is it? Unique. Is it actually? Yeah, that's my middle name. Like it's spelled unique, like unique, you... unique. Yes, yes, unique. That is very birth, on birth certificate. That's why I keep telling people I'm absolutely different, often imitated, never duplicated, one originated. Love that. Um, one superpower you would like to have. I don't even know, to be honest. I never really thought of that. I'm gonna get back to you on that one, though. Okay. Um, favorite TV show, if you have one? I don't have one. I don't watch TV. 
No, you're more of a movie person. I'm not even a movie person. I just, when I want to go to sleep, I put on the same TV movies. So I'm not really a TV person, period. Okay. Uh, favorite snack? Love snacks. I can't even pick one. I love chips. I love honey buns. I love, like, I went, I literally, I went grocery shopping, like, if I'm living here right now. If you can check my refrigerator, my counter right now, I got Oreos over there, honey bun, candy. I got, I got everything. I love snacks. I love, that's my problem, too. That's my downfall of snacks. I'm a snacker, too, yeah. It's the worst. I can just eat a whole... I snack like I'm pregnant or something. <laughs> well, um, so you had your weigh-ins. What did you eat as soon as you were done? I had French toast, bacon, eggs. That sounds delicious. That sounds amazing. Um, next question. Country you would love to visit? I'm trying to go to Paris. Yeah. Yeah. I've never been, but it looks I want to get I want to I want to get ma I want to get married in Paris. Under the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. That's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. That's fire, right? Um, where do you see yourself in five years from now? Five years? How old I would be? To thirty? I'm trying to retire. To be honest. To be honest. But you would still I'm have your other businesses. Oh yeah, but I'm trying to retire boxing, but I want to be oh. fat. I want to be with a big belly, but not fat, just with a big belly. Still with all my ice on. Uh, Still got the hands. Whatever sports that my kids play, sports dad, uh, it's millionaire, just relax. And I, I don't even want to put on a pair of gloves when I retire at all. I don't think I want to go to a boxing gym, to be honest. No? No. Do you feel like you're going to encourage your kids to try boxing? Or are you going to try to keep them away? No, hell no. My kids can't. I don't want my kids to box at all. Why? Because I can't even watch my friends fight. Uh, my brothers fight or my friends fight. I'll be nervous. I'll be ready to fight. And yes, kids, you can't protect them. You can't jump in. I'll yeah. start being a people parents. It's not fair. So I, I'm going to just, my kid, my son's not boxing. My, my, if I have a daughter, when I have a daughter, she can't box. I just know it. Any other sport, I'm down. Okay. All right, last question specifically for you. What has been your favorite color of hair and why? Pink, pink, because uh, pink is my overall favorite color. And then uh, the breast cancer, uh, is just so much people that I know have it and I, I like to support it. I love pink. Well, I saw that you're rocking the blue hair today. Um, I saw it in an interview is due to uh, razor autism. for autism, right? So yeah. why did you pick that for this fight? Uh, because there's a few people that I know that I have it, and, and I, 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 I've been just picking different causes, and I like to dedicate the fights to different people and they, and let them know that I they not fighting alone. I'm here fighting with them, and uh, I like to put smiles on people's faces. That's what I like. I like to make people happy. That's I, I, honestly like I don't be looking like I'm so happy all the time, but I'm I'm always I'm blessed. I can't complain. Like God blessed me so much and put me in this predicament. I remember being homeless, so. I just like putting smiles on people's faces, to be honest. I like to let people know, like, yo, he's, that, like, he's, like, I, and I do this out of the kindness of my heart. I don't do this for the money. I don't do this for show. This shit here is ain't for style. This shit getting died back Sunday, Monday, the latest. Well, that's very well said. Um, I want you to take the time now to shout out any of your socials, any of your businesses you'd like to promote. This is the time to do it. Uh, shout out to my restaurant, Primetime Chicken, 185 Palisade Avenue, Garfield, New Jersey. The club Gold Bar, Gold Bar, New York City, is in um what is it three eighty nine three what's the number again three something? It's on boom. I gotta get the number. Hold on, let me get the proper number. Yeah, you can't mess up your address for your business. No. Uh, right. I'm gonna tell Mike we have to try out the chicken spot now. Three. Oh, I had it right. Three eighty nine Boom Street, New York, New York. Make sure you come check that out. And uh, I'm okay. working on another bar in Garfield, New Jersey, too. But uh, that's not open yet. So make sure you check those out. And uh, my social media, you can follow me on Instagram, official primetime718 on Twitter, underscore, I think, primetime. Let me see. I don't even use it. So my assistant be on everything for me. So I can't even really. Let me make sure I give you the right thing, though. On Twitter, underscore, primetime718. Yeah, shout out to you for taking the time out to doing this uh interview with me i appreciate you to you and your time oh well i appreciate you for coming on the show thank you so much and best no of problem. luck tomorrow night thank you
make sure you tune in. Make sure y'all tune in tomorrow night. It's going down. It's prime time on Showtime, baby. <laughs>